Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial video about Digimon Digital Adventure. Today we're going to be diving deeper into the facet that is a large part of any tabletop role-playing game, combat. As you will be doing exploration, social interactions, and combat as usual in this RPG. But in order to actually defeat most enemies and take care of them, combat will be a large part of that. So today we'll be going over the basics of that. There will be further videos in the future going over more in-depth topics. But this will be a way to get you started on the very basics of how you will go about your combats in Digimon Digital Adventure. So, like many systems, how does combat begin? Well, it is whenever aggressive intent is declared by one side or the other, the GM will ask to roll initiative. And in this, everyone will roll their initiative. Unless one side has surprised the other, which means the surprising side will get a plus five to all their initiative rolls and the opposing side will not get any turns during that first round of combat as they are surprised. Now, what is your modifier for initiative? It is equal to your Digimon's agility. Normally, you will have a Digimon partner, so you will roll using your Digimon's agility stat. If you somehow do not have a Digimon partner and just a human, a human rolls initiative equal to their fight plus their agility stat. So, when initiative has been called by a GM, everyone will roll 3d6 plus their bonus. And you'll have your initiatives. Now, for this purposes, because of how Digivolution works in Foundry, I use the human so I don't have to switch out the Digimon to keep track of initiative. If you are interested in how I use Foundry to run this game, let me know down in the comments below and I'll get you. I'll also add more videos to go deeper into how Foundry works for this as well. So, combat begins. Let us first look at one of these small Kodokugamon. As it rolled highest, it will go first. Now, as a rookie, it has two attacks. Do bear in mind that you can only use each attack once per round. As it only has two attacks, it could use one of each. But also bear in mind that all Digimon also have access to a basic attack, which has the melee, damage, or ranged and damage tags, and nothing else. So these are always available to you. So, looking at what this Kod Kugamon has at its disposal, it has a range of 5 on its ranged attack, so we'll have to check. It is within range. So we will launch a spider thread to start at this Coronamon. So we will start by talking about a support attack. Now whether the attack is support or damage, you will still roll the same thing to hit. You will roll an accuracy pull check, which looking at them is 4. So I will go to my macro here for accuracy rolling. Roll. Remember, in Digimon Digital Adventure, anything that is a 5 or a 6 is considered a success. So, therefore, this Kodo Kugamon has rolled one success on its attack. Now, to see if it's actually hit, we will go to Coronamon and look up his dodge. Dodge is a pool check that you will use every time you are attacked. It is your ability to dodge. So, with a dodge of three, we will roll his pool check as well. He also received one success. What this means is that because the accuracy check meets or exceeds that attack it has hit. If there are any additional dice beyond this, if the Kodo, Kodo Kugamon had rolled a 2, it would have one leftover accuracy dice and therefore would add one to the damage of this attack. Or, because this is not a damaging attack, would add one to the duration of said effect. So, because this is a support attack, it does not do any damage. It does not deal damage to wound boxes at all. Instead, it applies the status effect, which in this case is immobilize for one round. What immobilize does is it rem is it lowers your movement speed by an amount equal to double the effect. So therefore, his movement speed is reduced by two. And he has now been targeted by an attack, which this means is, I use this to keep track of that on a Digimon, is his dodge pull now for the rest of the round is reduced by one. Therefore, he will always roll one less dodge whenever he is attacked again until the next round. So, since 
Kotokuma only has a melee attack as his other version, and obviously he is not in melee range, we will just go ahead and use a basic ranged attack. This, as I said, has the ranged and damage tags and nothing else. So, we will once again roll his accuracy. And he rolled a zero, which means he has completely missed. So do keep in mind, whenever a attack is rolled, you must roll dodge. Even though a zero and zero is still technically a tie, it still does not hit because zero accuracy was rolled. But this still counts as having dodged again this round. Every creature on its turn has two simple actions or one complex action. An attack is a simple action. Therefore, it has used two actions, its turn is over. So we'll move over here to Jada, who is the tamer for Coronamon that was just being attacked. So, looking at Coronamon's attacks, he has two attacks. So we'll look first, for him, into a buffing attack. He will use Petite Prominence on himself, because this is a buffing ability. So once again, he will roll accuracy, yes, even to attack yourself, in this case. Ooh, he rolled a two. Now, when you are rolling to buff something, you actually want to roll one. You want to roll above zero, but low. So, he rolled a two, which is okay. So, when you are attempting to accept a buff, you don't roll dodge, you instead roll your health stat as a pull check. So in this case, he will roll five dice. Oh, wow, look at that. He rolled four successes. He beat the odds. That is very well done, Coronamon. So what that means is you take the accuracy dice, subtract it from the base, give us the two left over, and because it was successful, it has a base of one. So normally you might think that this is a duration of two, but you get the plus one, so it is a duration of three. So do bear in mind that whenever you are using a buff effect, if it is targeting only a single target, you are guaranteed to get one round of it. So that is three, strength and three for him. So now to look at his other attack, it's melee. So we have to keep in mind, can he get there? His movement speed is normally six, but right now, because he's immobilized, it's reduced by two. So he can barely make it. So we will go ahead, have him move into range, which is a simple action, and attack, which is a simple action. Except he has this tag that is known as charge. We'll go deeper into qualities in another video. But this allows him to move an attack as one simple action, so long as it's a melee attack. But before he goes in, the beauty of having a Digimon partner, the main thing that a tamer can do is called directing. Directing allows you to add a bonus to their next attack accuracy check or their next dodge check. In this case, since he's going right in there, he's a fiery little boy, he will go ahead and direct his attack, his accuracy. The amount that you increase is equal to your tamer's charisma. So in this case, Jada has a charisma of 4. She will give plus 4 to the accuracy of this attack. And you can split up, as you can see, a Digimon's turn and a, and a Tamer's turn. You can use them in any order that you wish. So, he will go ahead and move in and do his attack. Now, just like the previous attack, we will once again roll his accuracy. Oh dear, that is a complete miss. But thankfully, due to Jada's bolstering, Jada's directing, he can therefore roll another four because that is her. Well, he is just destined not to hit with this attack. My goodness. <laughs> that is very impressive to roll a zero on eight. Wow, he... <laughs> that is just an incredibly unlikely, terrible roll all around by everybody. So, that means that nothing happened. He missed. There has been no damage done this entire combat so far. Everybody is very impressed. So, with only one action left, you can only direct once per turn, so she cannot also direct a dodge this turn. She will use some of her movement to get away in case there's some AoE that these creatures want to do, or an area of effect for those of you who 
may be newer to these kinds of things. All right, so now we move on to Lucas, who has completely different skills with his Abamon. He has a stunning attack and a cone. So, therefore, if he wants to hit things with the cone, we're going to have to get him in there and move. Therefore, his movement is 7. He can get right to where he wants to be. Uh, Lucas will direct this attack, and he will go ahead and use his Evil Whisper to hit everything in a 4 long cone. So, this cone is bought through the Area Effect tag, which is, once again, another attack. Which is another quality that you can buy to make your attacks more interesting. There's a four cone that will hit everything. Now, the thing to keep in mind with area of effect maneuvers like this, everything caught within it gets a bonus to their dodge equal to their ram value, which typically for rookies is one and champions are two. In this case, this holds true. So, looking at this coat to Kugamon, well first, let's go ahead and have Cooper roll his directed attack. Lucas has a charisma of three, therefore, with his accuracy of four, we will be rolling 76. If you wish to know how to do this in Foundry, you will do slash R for roll 76. You can use that to just figure out what it'll be, but if you do count successes of greater than four, CS greater than four, it will roll it all for you. That is how I've been keeping the tally. So this is three successes on this attack. So this Kodokugamon will attempt to dodge. It has dodged once this round, so is at minus one, but it has a bonus equal to its ram value, so it's practically a regular dodge. It has failed. I will roll the others as we go along. It is easier to take care of them one at a time, I find, than going through and rolling them all at once and confusing yourself. So, this one has dodged once more, but also it has failed, which because this is a damaging attack, we now actually go and look at Cooper's damage, which is 5, and look at the Kodo Kugamon's armor, which is 4. With a base damage of 5, plus the 3 leftover accuracy dice, this is 8 damage incoming. We look at the Kodo Kugamon's armor of 4, as armor will reduce all damage incoming. So therefore, he takes four points of damage, a hefty blow to his six wound boxes. Next, we move to the bigger Dokugamon. These, this is a champion. This is a far more durable creature. So it has six dodge, seven armor. So it will dodge, and it will receive an additional two dice thanks to its ram value to that number. So it meets the amount of damage that the amount of accuracy that he rolled therefore there is no additional damage just the base damage the so five damage from cooper minus the seven damage of the dokugamon means that it does not reduce the damage to zero he still takes one damage if an attack successfully hits it will always do at least one damage even if the armor is too high otherwise and we will roll a final dodge for the last one. It will get an additional one dodge die because it is its ram value. So it failed by one. So it gets one additional damage on top of the base five. So six damage incoming minus its armor, which once again is four. It has taken two points of damage. If there was an effect on this tag, if there was an effect on this attack, then both the Kodokugamon would take the effect, because they took at least two points of damage. The Dokugamon would not, because it only took one point of damage. This is why you want to, if you really want your effects to land, you either need to make sure that your damage is high, or you use a support attack. Go ahead and clear out that cone. All right. And once again, with Lucas's final action, uh, I'll have him move over. It's generally a bad idea, unless you specifically make your tamer completely for combat, it is generally a bad idea for tamers to run up and try to punch things. This is... They generally do not have the attack accuracy or health to do so, but also Digimon take reduced damage from human attacks, unless you have specific abilities that allow you to get around that. 
So, next we move to this Kodokugumon, which has something that's moved up right into his face. So he is going to attempt to use one of the most common ways of using a complex action. He is going to bolster an attack. What this means is it turns the attack into a complex action, but it gives it a plus two to its accuracy and to its damage pools. Or plus two to the accuracy pool, but plus two to the flat to the damage. It can also be used to make an attack have plus one to its potency if it has an effect on it. In this case, Poison Nails does have poison, but that can't actually help with the ability, so he's just going to bolster it for its accuracy and damage. Therefore, it rolls its base accuracy of nothing, <laughs> plus an additional two. There we go, that balanced out. So it has two successes. Cooper now will roll his dodge to attempt to dodge, also rolling a two. Remember, if there is a tie, it goes to the attacker. Therefore, this attack is hit. So we take his base damage of four, plus two because he bolstered this attack, plus two for the armor piercing quality that is on this attack. It technically ignores two armor, but it is generally easier unless you're attacking things with really low armor just to count it as additional damage. So this is effectively eight damage incoming. Cooper, with an armor of four, definitely feels this, taking four damage. That was very unpleasant. Therefore, because the Kodo Kugamon used a complex action, that is its entire turn to do so. Next we move on to the big guy, the Gokugamon. Now champions have more attacks that they have at their disposal. So, therefore, they have more things that they can do. Hmm, alright. Let's see, what looks nice and juicy? Yeah, these spiders picking on something that's immobilized. Yeah, this, that, that, that seems... Especially with two dodges already to his name. But we're going to go ahead and use a spider thread. A ranged attack that has nothing but pull on it because it's a support ability. So we're going to attempt to pull him into our range. We will roll accuracy. Only a two from a champion. Ooh. All right, well, Coronamon's already dodged twice this round, so he rolls two less dodge and has failed. So normally, this effect would have a duration of three turns upon Coronamon, because the two leftover accuracy dice plus the one base Pull does not have a duration. It pulls the target to you. And now he is going to use Poison Sting on him. And he has now dodged three times this turn. Though so this is an important thing to keep in mind. Because his dodge is three, he will always keep at least one dodge. Your, your dodge cannot be reduced to zero by just by this just by continuously dodging it around. You will always have at least one. So, therefore, this Dokugamon will attempt to attack him. Hmm, only a two. Not the worst. So, he will roll his one die and fail. Therefore, this attack, if we look at his damage, is a base of five, plus four because of armor piercing, is nine damage, plus two for being leftover accuracy dice is a total of 11 damage incoming to this poor little rookie. So, we go over and look at Coronamon. And we find that he has a whopping armor of 4. Therefore, he takes 7 damage from this attack. But wait! He does not, because he has strengthened, which raises his damage and armor by 1. Therefore, he only takes 6 damage from this, leaving him with a whopping 1 wound box. He barely survives. But he is, now on top of being immobilized, also paralyzed, which makes any movement that you do a complex action, making it very difficult to get away for 3 rounds. 
That ends the Doku Dokugamon's turn. One of the other major things that you will do is Digivolving. This is a very common thing in Digimon. Normally, when you start a campaign, you will not have this unlocked. This is something that's largely going to be up to you working with your GM to figure out what, how you are going to unlock your forms and exactly what the rules are going to be of how to get into those forms later. But seeing how both of these two are getting their heads absolutely handed to them, Sandy is going to tell Pinky Chumon here to Digivolve. This just takes a simple action from the Tamer, and they will Digivolve into their next form. What this will also do for you is it will cleanse all of the effects that are currently on that Digimon, positive and negative. And it will heal your Digimon to full health. So, with the simple action done by the Tamer, we now have Target Mon. Who's an interesting Digimon? I was very curious to make him. And so, we are going to start with a Visor Lock on the big guy, because he's scary. So, we are going to roll Accuracy. A whopping one versus his dodge. He's dodged the attack. Well, all right. It still lowered his dodge pull by one because it is an attack. So now we're going to use his major attack here. As you can see, it has so many different tags to it that some of them will make sense to you at this point. Some will. Weapon is another quality you can buy to increase your accuracy and damage with certain attacks. Um, pass is a type of area attack. So what this means is he can use his movement speed and attack everything along that line as he moves. So therefore, with his movement of 8, he can move straight through both of these enemies and hit them with the charge tag to move and attack at once, as Sandy will also direct this attack. Her charisma is 4. So. I think he will use his accuracy to attack. Good base of three, plus the additional 4d6 for the direct. A very respectable five attack. Therefore, this Do Kodokugamon will attempt to dodge. He has been attacked once by the AoE. He rolled a whopping one. All right, so once again, he gets a bonus equal to his RAM value, so he does get one more die. He did get another one. This is five accuracy versus two dodge. It's an additional three damage. Pinky's damage is six plus three for accuracy, plus four for armor piercing, bringing us to a grand total of, shouldn't be this hard, six plus three plus four, 13. With 13 incoming damage. Needless to say, this poor little rookie eats it really hard. With a armor of 4, he has taken 9 damage. With only 4 wound boxes left, he is defeated. Now, defeat is a little different depending on what you are. Typically, a Digimon reduced to 0 hit points is deleted. If it's in the wild, if it does not have a partner, it is immediately destroyed. If it has a partner, it would be reduced down to its default stage at one hit point. And they're typically very apologetic and defeated in this. Or if they're in their default state when they are defeated, typically they will be defeated and reduced to a Digitama or digi egg. Work with your GM a little bit if you want to be a little more strict about Digimon becoming Digitama that easily, or if you want that to be a much more difficult thing to have happen. And if a Tamer is reduced to zero health, they are always knocked unconscious. In this system, there is no way by the rules in version 1.4 for a human to die. If you want to have that type of chance in your campaign, talk with your players, talk with your game master, make sure everyone's on the same page there. So let us go ahead and finish resolving Pinky's attack here. This Dokugamon has a minus two for dodging, but a plus two because of its ram, so we'll just roll his dodge straight. Oh, nothing. 
So that is five bonus accuracy dice, plus four from armor piercing to make nine, plus his base damage of six. This is 15 incoming damage. You can see how quickly these champions are much stronger than the rookies. You have far more DP available to you. With an armor of seven, this makes the Dokugamon a bit tanky, so he will take six wound boxes, taking a huge chunk out of him. And this concludes one round of combat. Honestly, once you know better what you're doing, and I'm not going to sit around and you know explain every little thing, things will definitely go a little faster. But do keep in mind that with two actions for both your Tamer and your Digimon, sometimes combat in this game can be a little longer than others. And that's the basics. There are still many more things that we will get into in more complicated videos, such as called shots, clashing, and qualities that can affect combat, and many more things to come. But this video has gone on long enough. I hope this got you interested and helped you to understand the basics of combat. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. Remember like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more. As always, everyone, remember to be awesome. Until the next one, take care. Bye-bye.